Hello, this is Frank with Frank's Beautiful Rocks and Minerals. To see my collection of beautiful rocks and minerals, which I have prospected from across the United States and other countries, type in on YouTube, Rock and Mineral Identification, followed by my name, Frank Riser, space, capital M period, capital S period. Riser is spelled R-E-I-S-E-R. I encourage you to watch my videos on rock and mineral prospecting and geology and get out there into the field yourself and prospect for those beautiful rocks and minerals. You can support my channel on Patreon. On Patreon, simply type in my name, Frank Riser M period S period. And I appreciate your financial support the money of which goes to me buying more materials to do fascinating science demonstrations on. Patreon has notified me that in order to be fair to my patrons, I need to produce at least two videos per month. However, I can't do this, as you know, if you've been watching my videos, for a couple of reasons. Number one, I don't receive enough money on Patreon to be able to to purchase the materials on a monthly basis and stay within budget. I have a job of repairing TVs and audio electronics for my own sole proprietorship business, Frank Reiser Video Audio Service, but I don't earn enough money to pay the bills. I'm currently looking for a job as an electronics technician. Also, I'm not creative enough to be able to think of new and interesting videos to do on two or more videos per month. So I can only do one video per month or maybe even less than that. So please bear with me. I want to be fair to my patrons, but I can produce at least two videos per month. Sometimes I may be able to do so. The next experiment I want to do for you is with dry ice. Experiments with dry ice, frozen CO2, frozen carbon dioxide. However, the frozen carbon dioxide dry ice is not expensive, but the shipping, shipping and handling is. And it's expensive, so please bear with me. I can't produce more than two videos per month probably just one video per month. I'm sorry, please bear with me. Today's demonstration is with biology. It is on the annual rings of trees. I'm sure you've seen cross sections of tree trunks that have been cut down using a chainsaw. When you see a tree that has been cut down at its base, at its trunk with a chainsaw, and you take a close look at it, you may be able to see annual rings, rings in the circumference, the diameter of the tree. You can count those rings, and the number that you get identifies the tree's age. Let's get to the lesson. Here's a tree trunk cross section. We can see the growth ring, the pith, which is a hard inner layer of tissue, the heartwood, the sapwood, cambium, inner bark and outer bark. These are where the annual rings are. You can count them up to determine how old a tree is. In this case it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight years old. Let's have a microscopic view of this. Here we see the secondary xylem, secondary phloem, 
core cambium, vascular cambium, bark, primary phloem, primary xylem, and pith tissue. We'll get to these terms and what they mean in a moment. Primary growth in trees is, is responsible for the elongation of stems, trunks, and roots. Secondary growth is the growth of cells which results in an increase in the diameter of trunks, stems, and roots. Secondary growth is necessary because it allows the tree to be able to support itself and increases the transport of nutrients and water needed by a growing tree. Unlike humans who reach an age where growth stops, trees continue to grow and get larger over their entire lifespan. The vascular system of a tree is made up of two types of tissue, the phloem and xylem. The phloem transports nutrients down from the leaves to the roots and the xylem transports water and dissolved minerals upward to the plant from the roots to the leaves. The vascular cambium is a tissue that increases the diameter of the tree stems, trunks, and roots and forms the woody tissue. Additional xylem and phloem are created on either side of the cambium tissue which now forms a complete ring. The diameter of the stem must increase as these tissues increase toward the center of the stem. Therefore, a secondary ring of core cambium is formed. Just to the inside of the epidermis, the cells of which divide to create a layer of corky cells on the outside of the stem. This layer will increase the growth of the tissue inside the stem. More xylem and phloem tissue are created as more secondary growth occurs by phloem tubes being soft or flattened or squished together as the more numerous and very hard xylem vessels occupy more of the cross-section of the stem. Eventually, the majority of the stem consists of secondary xylem that forms the wood. The heartwood of a stem which is in the middle of the cross-section in this picture, is the central region of xylem and often becomes stained with resins and gums, making it dark in color. It provides support for the elongated growth of the tree. The sapwood is the outer xylem and transports nutrients and water up through the tree and is lighter in color. An annual ring is where the xylem tissue created in the spring has larger diameter vessels than the autumn produced xylem due to the greater volume of water that must be transported. These rings can be seen by eye. If you have ever seen a tree trunk cut through by a chainsaw, you can see the annual rings. Counting them gives you the number of years of growth of the tree. It tells you the tree's age. The phloem tissue is forced against the cork layers by the secondary growth forming the bark. The bark is on the outer part of the tree trunk. And here we have described the vocabulary words you see in this diagram. This diagram is of a tree trunk under the microscope and you can see the cells. We're going to see this through a microscope now, so let's get to the demonstration. And here we are. Here we see the cork, cork and bark on the outer side. This is a tilia or basswood, a three year old stem.
here we see right there the first annual ring the second annual ring two of them in between are the vascular tissues the xylem and phloem here's the pith tissue let's look at the pith tissue under high power right now we are at 100 times magnification We'll go up to 430 times micro, micro magnification with my confocal microscope. And here we are. You can see the cells. This is the pith. The pith is responsible for the support of the tree mostly. But as we travel outwards from the pith, we see the vascular bundles of xylem and phloem, which are responsible for transport of nutrients, dissolved minerals, and water up through and down from the tree. Under 100 times magnification again. Let's count the annual rings. In the center of the picture, there is one, there is two, and there is three to the pith. Technically, there's two, but we see it divides the vascular tissues into three layers. So it's a three-year-old stem. One, two, and three. Now let's look at Tilia, a two year old stem. Count the annual rings. One. Separating the vascular tissues into two layers. One and two. And let's see Tilia, one year old stem. Here we see the outer layer, the bark, the cork, cambium layer with the vascular tissues of xylem and phloem. One annual ring, one year old stem. There's the annual ring. It's the vascular tissue between those two darker layers of cells. One year old. And there's the pith. As I said, pith is responsible 
for the support of the tree, it's the hardest part of the wood. Usually darker in color. This is a prepared slide of Tilia that I bought from Carolina Biological and it's been stained for microscopic study under the microscope and so don't let the color fool you, fool you. This isn't the color of the tree itself. It's with the stain so, it, it, so that the cells appear more clear and obvious under the microscope. And this is Frank with Frank's Beautiful Rocks and Minerals, always reminding you to keep looking down.